Brett Wander, it's almost D-Day, so what's your view? What's the Fed going to do next week? Are they going to hike rates, leave them alone? Are they going to cut rates? What's it going to be? The Fed is going to leave rates alone. Janet Yellen has virtually said as much. She's concerned about the fact that inflation really isn't growing as quickly as she'd like to see, and the stock market volatility that we've seen of late is not helping that cause at all. Well, we've seen the yield in the 10-year Treasury go up to pre-Brexit levels. It's now at around 1.73%. Where do you see it going by the end of the year? Even if the Fed were to raise rates in December, they're not going to in September, but even if they were to in December, I still don't think that's going to have a very significant impact on longer-term Treasury yields with inflation low and all the central bank buying of bonds globally. I could easily see the 10-year Treasury remaining below 2% for quite some time. And how will the equity market react to a Fed non-move? It seems as though... I'm not sure what uh, good news means anymore. Is good news good news? Is bad news good news? Tell me what the news means. So in the current market, good news is bad news, as we know, because as we get closer to a Fed rate hike, equity markets are concerned about that. That's what we've been seeing for the last 72 hours of trading. However, longer term, that's likely to change. I don't think we're likely to be in a good news is bad news scenario for the foreseeable future. I think it's going to change, and the markets will eventually focus more on fundamentals. And they'll realize that a 25 basis point, 50 basis point hike in Fed funds is not enough to derail the underlying economy. All right, still we've seen a little bit of a tick up in yields, but it doesn't seem like it's enough for people who've been starved for yield for so long, who've been repressed, financially repressed as they say. So where are you finding yield right now? What about high yield, which has done very well since the February 11th turn? So yes, high yield offers more yield than lower yielding securities, obviously. I think it's a mistake for investors to focus solely on yield. If you wanted a 5% yield 10 years ago, you'd buy a U.S. Treasury. If you wanted a 5% year, a five yield uh, five years ago, you'd buy investment-grade corporate bonds. Today, to maintain that same 5% yield, you need to be in high yield. You need to be in junk bonds. It's risky. We don't advise investors to change their risk profile just in order to reach a yield target. All right. Well, what about emerging market bonds? We want to stay along this track. Uh, a lot of people are going to the emerging markets for, to get that yield component because they feel like they have to find it somewhere. Same thing. There are risks there. I'm not saying that there's anything imminent. I'm just saying that when investors start to increase their exposure to risky assets like high yield to emerging market securities, you're taking on a risk you didn't have in your portfolio before, and that's something to be very mindful of. All right, and then finally, let's put it all together. What should investors be doing and thinking before and after next week? The same thing they've been doing for years. Think long term, maintain a, uh, a thoughtful investment allocation profile, maintain liquidity, be mindful of the things that can go wrong, but don't overreact to them. All right, well, thanks a lot for coming on and talking about it, Brett. My pleasure. Thank you. And thank you for watching the street.